Lenny the Gorilla Rufati is back on the show, this time as he prepares to fight on October the 29th for Cage Fury, which you can catch on UFC Fight Pass when he faces Johan Laness. Lenny, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good, brother. How are you, man? God is good. I'm happy uh, we're starting to get things rolling again. You know, um, we're you know trying to do what we can with uh, what's go- been going on this year. Yeah, yes, sir. V- very well said. And uh, it has been a while since I've spoken to you. It's been over a year now. And uh, here we are. This is a big fight for you. You got a tough opponent. But I, I do want to start initially here with your most recent fight. You got a big win, an important win at that, uh, beating Devon Mosley via TKO in the second round. This is right before the pandemic started. So take me back to what seems like eons ago uh, and, and just tell me about your performance, how happy you are with that win. I was, I was very happy. He came, um, we had a similar record, but he came from also, he had some uh, pro boxing bouts. So I, I figured, you know, let's, let's not play his game. Let me play my game. I got the takedown immediately. He just went to work. Um, the first round, I think he got, he got gassed a little from me uh, pounding him in his guard. Uh, and then the second round went right back to work, got the takedown immediately. And then, uh, he was, he was tired. I got the pass. I pinned the arm, and I knew it was over. As soon as I pinned his arm, I knew it was over. I'm just looking at the ref, and I'm pounding. I'm like, all right, I'm ready when you are, ref, because he can't fucking move. You know what I mean? It was, it was an awesome feeling. Yeah. Now, obviously, you're still very young in your pro career, so you got a lot of time left to, to really accomplish all of your goals. But I, I'm curious if you felt maybe any extra pressure to go in there and get that win coming off uh, your second loss. And, and I'm sure you probably had a bad taste in your mouth losing to Troy again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, I made that. I think I made the mistake in fighting the guy again two months later. Uh, we had a very first, very close first fight, um, and then that was just all ego. And I wanted to re- run it back two months later. I got in my own head. I beat my own self in that uh, in that rematch. I, I went against my coach's game plan, and you know you live and you learn. And the reason why we train is for the feelings that we have when we do win. Like I did the last one and I, I just felt rejuvenated. I'm, I'm very happy and um, I'm boring too, man. You know, I, I beat this Canadian. I beat another guy. I could very well be, in, uh, you know, UFC or Bellator or Contender Series. I mean, they're, they're, they're taking everybody now, you know, because there's no, there's a lot less new talent coming up because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, this will be on Fight Pass and I already, I know Dana White and, and Maynard, they watch uh, CFFC. They, they've said it, that they're, and they'll be watching. So uh, me taking out this guy uh, from Canada will make me look really good when yeah. it happens, and I believe it will happen. No it's a good match, great, great matchup for me. For sure. And this is a, a tri-star guy. So, you know, he's coming from a, another uh, elite gym, much like yourself. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm interested to, to talk about, I guess, the mental side of the game. You're, you're saying how you jumped into that second fight with Troy a, a little too soon. And it was kind of like an ego thing. Like to people that are on the outside looking in that maybe don't understand the MMA game like yourself, they think, oh, it's just all physical and you just got to be stronger and be better inside the cage. But there's so much to the mental side of the game. How have you grown as a fighter from this setback? Oh yeah. Well, basically, it's at the end of the day, it's business. You know, this is a business. Fighting ads, yeah, passionate, but it's business. And like business, you have to make rash decisions. Uh, the and even Mike Tyson said it. He said it's not a a tough man. It's not a tough man's sport. A tough man's gonna get hurt real bad, real quick. It's a it's a, it's a thinking man, thinking man's a sport. My coach Duke Rubens always says that. You know, uh, you know, brains over everything. And there's so much that goes into it. Obviously, at the amateur level, a new pro level, sure, you could get away with being physically strong and all that. But that'll only take you so far, you know, until um, until you really got to start, you know, thinking about what you're doing. And it's easy from the outside looking in to criticize a Monday quarterback, especially a person that has never trained before or fought themselves. You know, there's so many emotions and things that go on in our heads as we walk out to that cage and as we train for months for just 15 minutes, I mean, it's absurd. And I love every minute of it. And that's why I'm doing this. I started, my first fight was at 28. I'm 32 now. I've been averaging three or four fights a year. I fucking love it, brother. You know, I feel like I'm blessed, man. 
Very cool. Well, I know we're all excited to see you step back into the cage here very soon. Uh, let's go back to, uh, I guess, the beginning of this pandemic. You know, February 21st, you get that big win over Devon. Uh, then, boom, our, our whole world changes. And I know it's been a little bit different for everyone, man. Just tell me what life has been like for you uh, over the course of this 2020. Yes, yeah, sure. So but before I, I get into that, I wanted to say about Devon. So we know my opponent on paper looks great. He's four and zero with three knockouts. Has not fought anybody good. My last opponent was three and two. He has the same amount of wins as all four of uh, my opponents' opponents. So he he's just a, a local t- uh, ticket seller that they just feed him uh, feed him bums. So not to like I said, everything will come to play when when uh, when the cage locks and and we're in there. I feel like it's a great great fight for me, but. You're asking about the pandemic, yeah, man. So I, uh, I let loose a little bit. I was, uh, let's just say, I, uh, you know, I'm a fat kid at heart, right? So <laughs> I, I put on some weight. Uh, I was, you know, I was very happy, and then I'm like, wait a minute, I can't, uh, I can't move like I used to. I gotta lose the weight. And you know, the gym closed, my uh, job closed down, so I didn't have no gym, no job. Honestly, brother, I was depressed, man. I'm like, oh my god. Like, this is awful, you know. I, I realized how important MMA has become to me. I was, almost took it for granted. I didn't know how much I loved just going to practice, leaving practice, being at practice. Uh, and I just thank God that we're, um, you know, the ball's rolling again. I know I know it's, it's not over the pandemic, but, you know, we can't shut down the world forever, you know. How heavy did you get? What was that? What was the, uh, the most you weighed tipping the scales? Well, since you're asking, I didn't want to say, but fuck it. I got up to 237, brother, and I'm only 5'9". Whoa, whoa, okay. I'm ripped right now. Look at this. (laughs) Solid 190. Yes, sir. So I put it on. I put on about 40 pounds in about three months, and then I took off about 40 or 50 pounds in the next three months. Hey, if you think about it, when I first started MMA training, I was fighting every two, three months. I never uh, gave myself a break. It kind of felt good to just chill out and just be my old self for a little bit. But then I was like, nope, I'm not truly happy when I do this. So, right. You know. Yeah, no, I hear you. Now, we, we've talked before uh, and, and at a pizza shop. Was this basically because of pizza? You're just devouring a lot of good pie? Is, is that how it all the weight came on? Uh, yeah. So, like I said, the business that I, I was managing the restaurant, the pizza shop, they closed down temporarily. And then I was just, I was like, oh, well, I don't have a fight coming up. So I guess I'll just eat tonight and then I'll eat again in the morning and then lunch and then dinner. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, like I said, I never had a good diet growing up. Um, but then MMA obviously changes all that if you want to, unless you want to be a, a small heavyweight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, now that you're, you're back to your, your normal walking around size and everything and, and, and everything is, is getting somewhat back to normal, are you working again? Is Tell me what your, your I guess, your day-to-day life is like now. Yeah, thank goodness I got a new job. I think I got a better job. I got benefits and all that. I, uh, I'm i an overnight uh, manager at a local Walgreens. So okay. if I can get them to sponsor me, I'm set. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's that's a, a a huge business right there. That would uh, really go a long ways for you. Now, as far as this working out for your training, I got to imagine it, it probably is the perfect situation, right? You you work at night, you can train during the day. Is is it just kind of allowed you to get even more work in? Oh yeah, bro. So it's uh, the way we do it is we work seven nights in a row at ten hours each, and then we're off seven nights in a row. Right now I'm off, so that's why I, I was able you know able to do this. Um, it's a little hectic on the on week training, but I still, either way, I still train every day, every, Mm -hmm. like, uh, on my off week, I'll do more optional classes on top of MMA. And then on my on week, I'll do strictly MMA, you know, stuff like that. Now, Walgreens typically has a, a red box, uh, right, at least at the location in most of them. And I'm a huge movie buff, so that leads me to my next question. Did you get into any movies or any Netflix series during this this downtime? Like, give me a suggestion of something that you liked uh, that I, I should check out. Oh, man. Well, since you asked, since you said Netflix, you got to see, if you haven't seen it, you got to see Tiger King. It is an American masterpiece, okay? Don't sleep on Tiger King. Episode three took the cake. Probably one of the best shows ever. Um, let's just say that bitch Carol Baskin is still out there. 
So do you think she murdered her husband? Because I yes. kind of do. Yes. <laughs> Dude, I, I talked to, okay, police officers and detectives that I trained with, and they told me they could bet a million dollars that she's guilty. But she's smart. She's smarter than OJ because she didn't even get charged. If there's no body, they can't they can't charge you with murder. And if the body pops up somehow, which it won't, then they can. The key, the, the smoking gun was uh, the will. In the case of my disappearance, nobody ever says that in a will, ever. She, the bitch is guilty, but hey, she got away with it. Whatever, I guess. Now, have you ever seen uh, Kingdom? Because that's something, that, and it's an MMA uh, series. I got into it big time. Have you watched that yet? No, no, sir. I have not. Um, I'm so entrenched in MMA on my all my thoughts all day, every day. I decided to not give that one um, a look, but perhaps I will. If you think it's good, maybe I'll take your recommendation and check it out. Yeah, yeah, bro. You'll you'll really enjoy it. I, I got hooked, and I blew right through every season in like a week and a half. I just I loved it. It's one of the best series, especially being a huge MMA fan. Uh, I, I just soaked it right up, so I guarantee you'll love it. Oh, okay, well, in that case, then maybe I will check it out. All right. Now let's talk about this camp a little bit. You know, obviously Rufus Sport, you know, Coach Duke Rufus, you have some of the best training partners in the world. Who have been some of those main guys that you've been getting the work in for this camp? Oh, man, we got, you know, we have an all-star set of cast, man. We got Gerald Mearshart always helping me with uh, uh, everything. We got Emmanuel Sanchez. We got Rafian Stotts showing me how to, how to wrestle uh, college style, fighting style. I love it, man. We we have such a good team in the in state of Milwaukee, state of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. It's amazing. These guys are all top of the line fighters, and I get to learn from them, and I'm grateful. You know, we got Anthony Pettis, Sergio Pettis. Um, I'm I'm blessed, man. No doubt. Now I gotta ask, where, where's GM 3s head at right now after that that loss? I know he took a lot of uh, flack on on social media. Which, by the way, I I kind of got into a social media war with someone on Twitter. I had to block them because they were just all over him, and I just was like, "What? Well, you wouldn't say it to his face, so why are you just getting all over him on social media and saying you need to retire and you stink because you clearly don't know what you're talking about?" I, I mean, where, where's his head at? How's he feeling? Oh man, he he's doing fine. You know, he's been there, done that. Dude has. 40, 50 pro fights. He has more submissions than anyone else in the UFC middleweight division. Um, the guy's a veteran. Shit happens. <laughs> People that do say things like that, once again, goes back to what we were talking about earlier. They never have the balls to say to his face or would they ever get in the cage. Uh, right. the, the man is a boss. Nobody wanted to fight that guy. And he stepped up to the plate. And I know for a fact he'd do it again if he, if he had to. You know, Gerald is a is a class act. He's a uh, he's a great human being, very knowledgeable. I honestly believe he will get to the top in his division. The guy is a monster. It's just a you know a minor setback. You know, yeah, shit happens. <laughs> it's sure. it, it takes um sometimes it takes one submission. Sometimes it takes one punch. Sometimes it takes one slip. You know, to people that talk like that, it's um. I don't know what to say. You know, you wouldn't believe the things I heard when I lost and I'm not even famous. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I can only imagine what it's like when you are in that level. D d when you see things on social media and people are coming at you, how do you react to it? How do you handle that? Honestly, I, I don't want to. Usually I try not to. Obviously, I, I never, ever make threats or say anything vulgar because why? I don't give them. And two, I just tell them. You wouldn't say this to my face, nor would you do what I do. So uh, please, if you have, you know, basically it sounds cheesy, but if you have nothing nice to say, don't say it at all. Um, clearly you have your own insecurities and you need to project them onto others. Why don't you, you know, look at yourself in the mirror? Yeah, no doubt about it. A lot of keyboard warriors out there, hopefully. Uh... Especially with this pandemic. So many keyboard warriors. Oh, the pa oh man. You know, that's why I stopped. I finally took advice and I stopped uh, the political posts and all that. It's just no look, people they're either left or right. They're not gonna you're not gonna change nobody's mind. So it's just I'm better off just shutting the hell up and you know, whatever plays out, plays out. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, have you seen any of the, uh, the the comedic stuff that I've done? I, I have this side thing that I'm trying to do some comedy and I got a good Trump impersonation and I'm working on my Biden and it's like no matter what I do. Yeah, I saw your Trump clip. That's hilarious. That's pretty good, dude. That's, that's <laughs> just try to get on a Saturday Night Live for that one. 
Well, that's what I'm trying to do. That's always been like a uh, a passion and a goal of mine. So no matter how, how old I get, I'm, I'm always trying to work in that direction. But to go back to what you're saying, I actually was getting private message saying like, you know, forget you, you shouldn't be doing that. And I'm like, look, you have no idea where I fall like politically. Like, I'm just trying to have fun. I'm just trying to have a laugh, like take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay. But it, it, to go to your point, it, it really is. It's sad uh, how people just kind of get all over others. It's and really just be nice. That, that's what we should do. Those people that are the keyboard warriors, they would never, ever have the balls to even get into a, an argument or a debate in person, I feel like. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It is what it is to each his own, you know. Have you seen Brendan Allen much in this camp? Not too much. I know he was here um, uh, over a month ago for his fight that he last had, which was a very impressive uh, win. Uh, but no, I, I know he's uh, he's been around, you know, Louisiana. Area. I know he's coming back soon, though, for his next one. So. Yeah, I wanted Brent, to get your thoughts. Good man. He's a sarcastic motherfucker, but he, he's very nice. He's got a kid now. He's got a, he's a great person. Yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on that matchup with Heinish. How do you see that shaking out? That's I think that's a, a great matchup for Brendan, and I see Brendan taking it to him on the feet or on the floor. Honestly, I think Brendan is a uh, really, uh, really tough and um, yeah, no, I, uh, I think he's going to take the guy down easy. I'm looking forward to that one very much. One last UFC prediction I got to get from you before we transition here. Obviously the huge lightweight title is right around the corner. Habib and Gaethje. I can't wait, man. It's like Christmas Eve for me. I, I'm just really salivating for this fight. Who do you have and how do you have him winning it? So I'm, I'm a little worried about this. So I ain't going to lie. It's a tough matchup for her. Obviously, I want my brother Habib to win, man. I'm, uh, you know, I respect uh, where he's from. Uh, you know, his his people were, you know, they they suffered and they've always been fighting back. They're survivors. Um, look, the problem is when he fought Ally Quinta, he had a hard time t- taking him down or keeping him down because of Al's wrestling. Well, Gagey's got even, I think, you know, even larger pedigree of wrestling than um, Al, I think. So. That's the only thing I'm worried about. But we all know Gagey likes to, you know, um, stand and strike. But he, we all know he can wrestle. He just doesn't use it. He, I think he just uses it just to keep it on the feet. So, obviously, if, if Habib can get in on him and control him, he's got it. But I, I'm worried, man. I think this is probably going to be his toughest matchup up to date. Mm-hmm. American yeah. wrestlers, man, with, you know, American wrestlers are very, very tough. Styles make fights, and this this is a difficult stylistic matchup for Habib. Uh, I, I can't wait for it. I, I really I, think it's going to be fireworks. I, I see him winning a close decision. That's just okay. my opinion. I had to guess. I say, brother Habib wins uh, three rounds. The uh, three rounds of two. Okay. Well, I can't. It's going to be a good one, brother. Let's talk about you. So you're four and two as a pro now. Uh, as you mentioned, you have such a, a great stable of training partners around you. I mean, you have UFC fighters. You have great Bellator standouts. I mean, there's so many options for you here moving forward. What, what are your hopes? What are you hoping to accomplish here? Uh, and what are you forecasting for 2021? Well, brother, it would be nice. Honestly, I wouldn't mind Bellator or UFC at this point. You know, uh, I know they, said they signed a guy from Pennsylvania who was six and two. Shit. Well, I'm four and two, so I beat this Canadian. Fight again in uh, in December for CFFC, maybe, and um, in Philly again. I finish out the year six and two, and then maybe you know uh, Bellator UFC 2021, or who knows? I beat this, I knocked this Canadian out. Um, I know they're doing a contender series in November. You know, five and two, why not? I mean, uh, I, I've seen guys with lesser records on contender, so let's see. Also, I should note. My very first UFC Fight Pass fight was a highlight reel knockout. I knocked out the number one uh, guy coming up as pro, as a welterweight. Um, and I just put him to sleep with my left hook, and uh, that was like top knockouts of the year on UFC Fight Pass in 2019. It was like number 17 out of whatever the countdown was. So, so I, you, I'm trying to do that again. Yeah, for sure. Do you do you feel like you kind of rise to the occasion if the, if the stakes are bigger and the lights are brighter, you're going to see the best uh, Lenny the Gorilla that there is? Yes, I've I've noticed about myself when there's um whenever there's more pressure that's you you know they say pressure makes diamonds usually I that's when I'm like okay let's fucking go the problem is if if you think the guy you know sucks or whatever that's usually the problem because that's when you that's when they catch you sleeping you know when you don't respect them it's always better to to respect them. 
Now, this fight for Cage Fury will be close to, I believe, where you grew up in Jersey. Are you going to have a lot of family and friends uh, at this event, or will there even be fans in attendance? That's that's the question, I guess. That's a great question. So at first, there was no fans, and now each fighter gets like a table or two of fans. So eh, I got one table, six people. So because it's quarter capacity or what, or even less or something, whatever the. Um, you know, uh, I'm just happy I'll at least have like a little fan booth. But usually, you know me, I when I when I fought at Ring of Combat, I bring over a hundred people every fight, man. And place in there is, a, is I turn that place into an Albanian, you know. Like, <laughs> and then if it's me and my uh, Albanian brothers fighting there that night, the whole place is fucking Albanian. It's great. So we won't obviously won't be able to have that this time. But I grew up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is right over the bridge from Philadelphia. I have all my friends I grew up with. Uh, we can hang out. Right after the fight, we go get some Philly cheesesteaks. I believe my father, for the first time, he's going to come to the weigh-in. He said, I'm only coming to the weigh-in. I take pictures, and we go. I said, I'm, I cannot come and watch. Uh, you know, God, God forbid uh, you, you you lose or you get hurt or something. I, you know, I'm 60. I don't want to catch a heart attack. <laughs> he's, and he's not joking. So, at least I know he cares, so that's good. Will, will he be watching it on Fight Pass, though, or will he just wait to see the result and then watch it? Yeah, no, he'll wait to see the result because uh, he obviously he, he does not like me doing this at all. And I, I get it. I'm his son, you know, but he's saying if you're going to do it, son, better fucking win. Do it the right way. Don't embarrass me. That's what he says. So I'm like, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you leave for Philly and what are the, the, the testing and quarantine stipulations that you're going to have to go through? Yeah, so I. Luckily, I did all my uh, medicals yesterday and the day before. Everything is green. Um, everything is good. Uh, I have to take to so the fights of Thursday, the 29th, the Monday prior. I got to take a uh, Corona test out in Philadelphia and then just quarantine for, I think, 24 hours or whatever the case may be. And we're set. OK, so you won't have to test day up like b before the fight. Right. I, I think from what they said, it was Monday, the Monday yeah. before. I think that's what they're doing now. Unless they do Monday and then again the day before the fight. I don't know, but that's what the Arias told me. Uh, the matchmaker said Monday. All right, well, Sunday, and I'm, I'll be there for a whole week. I was just out there visiting. I'm happy to go back again. <laughs> Let's dive into this matchup with Johan. Based on what you said earlier, I am feeling like you think you're going to finish this guy. Uh, that you just have a little bit better competition that you faced in the past, and you're just more more well rounded. Uh, how do you see this fight shaking out? Yeah, so he's he's a big guy, cuts a lot. He's strong. He likes to throw hands. Um, he just likes to swing, and he likes to bully guys. So, just what do you do with that? You bully the bully. Whenever uh, that's why a bully is a bully because they don't like getting bullied, right? They're uh, he. So after the first round, he's gonna be gassed. So after the first, if it goes past the first round, uh, I know I'm gonna win. Mm -hmm. In the first round, I could take down ground and pound or maybe catch him on the way in or maybe we'll stand and strike. Let's see what happens. You know, I feel, I feel really good about it. Uh, I fought better. I fought guys better. I fought guys bigger. Um, and yeah. So obviously MMA, you know, you're going to take whatever he gives to you. But, you know, when you close your eyes that night and you envision how this ends, do you see it going into the second round, him gassing and you finishing him? Or do you think, you know, you could potentially finish him in the first? Sure. Potentially in the first. Uh, if I had to make a guess, I say round number two, I do to him what I did to my last victim. Okay. Uh, I wanted to say he's also like a um, – I don't know if he trains at TriStar. I think he's uh, – He's got like his own gym or something like that. He's a, he's a, I believe he's a kickboxing coach. So we'll see. All right. Well, this is a really intriguing matchup. Uh, obviously, he has a, a good record as well. So uh, I think, you know, as you said, Dana White watches uh, CFFC and uh, he'll be tuning in uh, come fight night because this is uh, a big regional fight for you. Now, I think the biggest question that, you know, really everyone wants to know is post fight when you win, are you going to Geno's? Are you going to Pat's? Where is the post fight cheesesteak going to be? Both. They're right across the street from each other and they're like tiny. So, and I won't be dieting anymore, at least for a couple of days. So I'm going to both. And then I'm probably going to go um, get another one from another place. They got like cheesesteaks all over Philly. Yeah. 
it's been way too long since I've had an official Philly cheesesteak, so I can't wait to go back uh, and remember what that uh, tastes like because they are good. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, you, you've been there? When was, uh, when was the last time you were there? Dude, it was it was like 2006. It's been like 14 years. What brought you there? Uh, I actually went to – I had a family member that lived in New York – we went to Madison Square Garden to catch a, a hockey game, uh, and he took us, uh, you know, over to Philly and to get an official cheesesteak, and we just kind of toured around for the day, you know. But I haven't been back since, so I need to change that. A lot of history in Philly, man. That's the, the birthplace of our nation. Um, no, I love Philadelphia. A lot of rich history there, and um, yeah, uh, shit. I'd recommend anyone going. I can't wait to go again. Well, I, I wish I could be down there uh, for this fight to, to see you compete. Uh, again, Lenny, I, I always appreciate the time, my man. Looking forward to watching you on Fight Pass come the 29th. Before I let you go, if there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors you have, and I know you have some, uh, the floor is yours. All right, really quick. Once again, I wanted to say uh, thank you, God, for all the support I have from everyone. Um, so my managers, I got uh, Sucker Punch Entertainment. Method MMA is going to be there, my first gym, Rufus Sport. MMA Tea Company, Elite Events in New York City, owned by my cousin. I got Sal's Pizzeria out here in West Bend in um, Wisconsin. My Fight Space, The Machine Inside, Tony and Tina's, Budek and Pizza in, in the Bronx, New York City. Section247.com. They are a um, talk show. My old football coach, actually. <laughs> Lakeshore Realty, almost done. Groupie Musicor Melodia, my good buddy, Haiti Mamati. This guy, dude, he comes to all the fights. He helps find me sponsors. I love this guy. And he happens to be a wedding singer, an Albanian wedding singer. Very Harry, cool. <laughs> Harry's Prohibition Bistro here in Wisconsin. He's got the best authentic Italian food in the, in the, in the, in the state. Superstars Wrestling, Plaza Pizza, my dad's pizza shop in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Besso Auto Repair in New York City, Queens. Cabinet Depot, Newark, New Jersey. Parkside Family Restaurant, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. That's my sister's breakfast and lunch joint. Amora CBD. And that's it. All right. Well, you clearly have the uh, the sponsor game on lock. That's a, that's a lot of uh, legit sponsors there for you, man. So you clearly have a lot of support. And I know I a lot of to make them. And I, want, I will make them proud because um, I'm very grateful of their uh, support and sponsorships.